This is part four of our five-part series about the astrolabe. In this part, I'll rush through a short overview of the long history of the device. Many museums have got some fantastic original astrolabes on display. The largest collection is that held by the Museum of the History of Science in Oxford, England. If you can't physically make it to their museum, their website is well worth visiting. The first astrolabes were created by the ancient Greeks probably in the 3rd or 4th century BC. There is good evidence that Ptolemy used one when he was cataloguing stars in the 2nd century. In the 4th century, Theon of Alexandria wrote a detailed treatise on its use. Unfortunately, there are no existing copies. The earliest surviving astrolabes come from the Islamic world. For Muslim scholars, the astrolabe was invaluable for calculating prayer times and determining the direction of Mecca. This 9th century example is from Syria. Use spread from the Islamic empires both to India and to Europe. In the 1390s, Geoffrey Chaucer wrote an introduction to the astrolabe for his son Lewis. This is actually the earliest technical manual written in English on any subject. Early in the 15th century, Henry the Navigator established the Portuguese seafaring fleet he provided them with astrolabes for navigation. By the end of the 15th century, the Portuguese had explored the whole west coast of Africa, and Vasco da Gama had discovered a sea route to India. In 2016, the wreck of the ship Esmeralda, one of da Gama's fleet, was found off the coast of Oman. This 1495 astrolabe, with the Portuguese coat of arms on, was amongst the thousands of artefacts that were discovered. This astrolabe was made for Queen Elizabeth I of England in 1559, the year of her coronation. It carries her coat of arms and an inscription. It is likely it was commissioned by Robert Dudley, the future Earl of Leicester. The instrument was later owned by John Greaves. It was presented to the university for the use of subsequent civilian professors of astronomy in Oxford by John's brother, Nicholas. There has been a long tradition of using astrolabe-like elements in clocks. In the 1330s, Richard of Wallingford constructed a clock for St Albans Cathedral. This reconstruction shows how closely it is related to the astrolabe. This astronomical clock in Prague is probably the most famous. In 1905, this clock in Bern inspired Albert Einstein to think about how it would look if the local trams travelled at the speed of light. Astrolabes are not just fascinating technical marvels, they were also the most widely used and most useful scientific instruments for more than a thousand years. This has been the fourth part of our series about astrolabes.